Greetings YouTube. What I have here is a Sharp vacuum. That's right, Sharp is in the company that used to make TVs and all sorts of crap from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Um, so, for whatever reason, Shark is no, Sharp, <laughs> which sounds like Shark, is no longer in the vacuum industry. Uh, but these vacuums were very similar to the Panasonic's, uh, and very similar to a Recar Simplicity. In fact, we're going to end up probably using a Recar Simplicity belt and bag here in a minute. Um, but this one was brought in for service, and these are getting really rare because these were not necessarily made to last. They weren't made to die right away either. They were that weird, you know, five to ten year lifespan expectancy machine. Um, and people really like these. These were top rated in Consumer Reports and all that, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and they, they clean all right. And they don't filter very well by today's standards, but they clean all right. And, you know, they're a bat bypass machine with tools. I mean, shit, you had a telescoping wand on most of these things. You had a uh, nice long crevice tool. You did have this funky tool valve. Um, never quite a fan of that. Um, so we're going to go apart. We're going to service it. We're going to see what makes it tick. Uh, first of all, I'm going to turn it on real quick and just make sure it works. That sure doesn't sound good. Um, so we see a metal base plate. Some of these have metal brush rollers too. Um, so we're going to see... Yep. So there are no parts available for these, by the way. If you have one of these, it is a probably an item some vacuum cleaner collector would enjoy very much, but most of us are just not going to spend the time with it. So first what I'm going to do is pop the, the belt off, and we're just going to check the motor mounts. Those are alright. Again, this is basically very similar mechanically to a Recar Vibrance or something like that. Um, uh, what is different is there is really no height adjustment or even wheels that flop up and down like Simplicity and Panasonic developed. You do have these funny little hoof things uh, that keep the vacuum upright. So we're going to pull that off. Again, we're not actually going to do a whole lot with this. We're just going to see what's here. We've got stuff caked up in here. Now we're going to turn it on without that make sure everything is... Sounds all right. These are called the twin energy because they had a twin fan. Uh, I'll tell you what, that machine is producing a lot of power for an upright, even by today's standards. We have a side fed suction on this machine, uh, which means it does have quite the uneven cleaning path. Got a little bit of play in the brush roller, but the brush roller is actually serviceable. Um, so we're gonna go see if we can't just. Yep. I'll tighten it right up. Then this side is a. Uh, Washer, so we're just going to open that up, clean that out. This is one of those machines that some old folks really did their research 20 years ago and bought and have been very satisfied with it, as they should be. It's a, it's a great machine, uh, but it's at the point where it should be replaced. Um, and I can only lead the horse uh, to water, I can't force it to drink. And sometimes our customers just do not want to do what they need to do. And a lot of people, when they get older, for some reason they th say, oh. As I was saying, there is a conception with some old people, for some reason, that they are going to die soon and that they should not reinvest in anything. Uh, which is the most preposterous thing. First of all, if you're going to die soon, why wouldn't you just buy the best 
you know, you're probably not going to run money out of money before you die. Maybe you are, but just just my two cents there. Uh, also, these people are not that old. This these people are probably in their late 60s or early 70s, which are the you know, same age as my parents, who would never say anything quite preposterous, even if they were. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I've heard this excuse from so many people, and I, it's like the worst thing I hear people tell me on a day-to-day -day basis, I think. Um, so don't be one of those people who, ooh, I'm going to die soon, and I'm not going to replace anything I own. No, we're... <laughs> you know, do you, you not fill your tank of gas Why, if you say that shit? Like, oh, I'm going to die soon. I'm not going to buy another tank of gas. No, of course not. Fuck you. Um, anyways, I digress. We are going to finish putting this brush roller back together, which is... I don't have a snap ring tool at this store, and I am uh, now realizing I need to order one. Um, so I'm trying to use a screwdriver here, and that's just no fun when you're working with an e-clip in limited space like this um, and yeah you can you can use a screwdriver but it's it's always hell when you do so yeah now, I, I sold these machines in a different variant than this uh, when I was in high school so these you know and I remember that we this is another one of those vacuum shop stories of, oh, this is a piece of shit. You know, I don't want to sell this to a customer. You know, at the time we were pushing sanitaires, Mexican sanitaires, uh, was our was our preference in the store. And we just didn't think that these were very good, or we would try to sell them a simplicity actually, uh, where I worked at, and um, that was always considered better than this. Now that we've had a few customers walk into our store and walk out, it's interesting to note that these machines were made in Malaysia, not China. Uh, much like another popular vacuum. Let's see, uh, Dyson. I wonder if they're made in the same factory. I say that seriously because Dyson doesn't actually necessarily own the factory uh, Intertech who makes their products. Um, it's just kind of an interesting fact. Right, so we're putting this back together now. Like I said, these were considered really middle of the road back in the day. Now we probably would consider these extremely high quality, uh, just because of so many bad products that have come out. Um, so we're taking this apart. I feel like there should be another washer on this or something. I don't I don't like how this is put together at all. You're gonna look. I almost feel like somebody took this apart and moved the washer somewhere else on this vacuum. My two cents here. Yeah, I think I think is what has happened is that the person who last serviced this put the brush roller together wrong. I say service because this cannot possibly be the first time this vacuum has been serviced. One thing I find very interesting is. Uh, it's quite common for people to have a vacuum that needs regular belt changes and they don't do it at all. 
and they pretend like it never needed it. Like it's really this funny state of denial that they get into. Um, this. I know that for a fact that these people cannot change their own belt, uh, at least anymore, after dealing with them. So it means that this has to have been brought into a shop at some point just to have that done. Just kind of a. All right. Yeah, that goes in there a lot easier now. Um, so that would. The order of these washers would make more sense this way too. So we've got some spring washers, kind of like Hoover. Bet you all that goes together just right now. Ooh, yes, sirree. One of the vacuum industry is you often have to reassemble things that you have no idea how they really should go. Because there's so many different ones. Still, those bearings are shot on that ro roller. Put a couple of drops of triflow on them, trying to just free them up. But reality is, these people are going to need a new roller. And the reality is, they're not available. <laughs> So, hopefully when I put the belt on it and it's been run for a little while, it frees up a little bit. But I'm kind of doubtful. Alright, so we got the roller. Can. You notice the shape of this chamber here isn't round. It's very square with some odd things. It doesn't allow for a very efficient air path. Um, so this machine actually does lose a lot of its air efficiency at the cleaner head. I keep seeing these things on uh, vacuum land. These people, well, this vacuum must lose airflow through point A, point B, they, they make these imaginary charts up that don't make any sense if you understand airflow. Uh, and, you know, don't talk at all about if the vacuum works or not, that they talk about these air, weird airflow loss charts you see online. Um, I think, uh, what is his name? I think it's Rob, could be wrong, at the vacuum test or whatever came up with this, or he was the first one I saw at least. Of these bogus airflow charts. Uh, you know. But what do you expect from somebody who lives in their parents' basement? Um, just wipe this down too. But the efficiency of this brush roller is really kind of cool that they took this time to sculpt the brush roller to allow airflow, but they didn't uh, take the time to sculpt anything out or redirect this hose over here or anything. Again, these were budget vacuums. Um, I think that'll work. It's starting, the brush roller is starting to loosen up now that I've given it my love. It did have a whole bunch of this stuff in it. So and this is just a thin stamped uh, sheet metal tray. And here how loud everything is on this. I attempt to quiet up some things. Alright. Next. Twin energy. Full time on board tools for instant use. 
let you guys read that cover. It's quite, uh, excuse me, things that are they put on vacuum cleaners to sell them in the store are just always hilarious. Um, sharp PU2 bag. You notice this doesn't have a gasket on the bag. It does have this little sealer deal, but no gasket on sharp PU2 bags. Um, you do have a relief valve. Again, it's kind of a it's kind of a shame I can't get the supplies for this. I'm really do it proper. to open this up real quick. You can see all the dust that has built up there. Um, we're going to change the light bulb which is burnt out, as it should be, for the age of the vacuum. Knock the camera down. I actually put the camera fairly close. It doesn't look like it, but I put the camera fairly close to the vacuums so you guys can see as much as possible. And more than one occasion, I'll knock it down. Look how ugly these uh, stands are. All right, now you're going to see me use the simplicity recar bag. Now you can get EnviroCare bags that fit this, um, but it, it, it really doesn't make any sense to me to do that. Uh, when I have so many of these simplicity bags laying around. Again, it's unfortunate. I, I just can't get anything proper for this machine anymore. Uh, So there, there are on this cover, this is like a dead giveaway because there are no gaskets or anything leading to these. These are just there. They're not easy to get to. Actually, yeah, there we go. These are the exhaust filters. They are tired and gone. Um, I'm actually probably going to wash this cover before I give it back to the customer. It's, it's just dirty. So I'm pulling those filters out. Just, just you really can't, you can't get them. These are filthy. Need to be changed. Uh, so they're restricting air flow. They never really filtered anything more than motor carbons, anyways. Um, so that is pretty much all we can do when we get one of these in. Uh, again, if the parts were available and this were 15 years ago, we would be changing the filters. We would change the brush roller. 
but that's what we can really just just about all we can do. I know this is not a fair test, but I'll at least let you know. So that's what's in the air right now after this thing is running. So not the least bit acceptable by today's standards in filtration. Yeah, that brush roller is moving smoothly now that it's run in there and I've worked some lubrication into it. So that, that's fairly acceptable. Um, I hate, again, I hate to send things out, out of here in this condition, but there isn't much we can do uh, for this kind of machine. So I'll, you know, I will clean the, the paint marks off and do that. Um, again, this, these are pretty much all at that point where they need to be replaced. So always please like and subscribe.